Hey, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us here on Let's Go Outdoors. Well, not too long ago, a conversation about our native trout was held in the Kananaskis area. It was a workshop. And... Um, to give us a little bit of uh, insight, what was discussed, and maybe some outcomes from the meeting. It's a real pleasure to welcome Dr. Andrew Paul. He is a senior science advisor uh, with Fish and Aquatic Ecosystems for Alberta Environment and Parks. He's also an adjunct professor at the University of Calgary. And with that mouthful, sir, welcome very much to the program. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, uh, Dr. Paul, maybe let's talk a little bit about, first of all, why uh, was a, a workshop held in our province about this uh, very important topic? Um, yeah, great question. Um, you know, uh, I've got my, my timing correctly. You know, about 30 years ago, uh, Trout Unlimited Canada organized um, a, a couple of really influential workshops on, on bull trout. That was right around the time bull trout were being listed as Alberta's provincial fish uh, and concern had been growing over um, the, the, the status of, um, of uh, our native trout in the, in the province. Uh, and those were fantastic workshops to get people together from not only Alberta, but across Western Canada and the United States. We didn't have the capacity or ability to, to kind of pull together a, a really large workshop, but we wanted to get people doing science and research on native trout in Alberta together. Uh, a, a, again, uh, we were able to do that recently at, um, at at this workshop, and we were able to invite in some um, really important speakers from throughout Western Canada, but well, actually across Canada, uh, but also from from the United States as well. What is science doing right now in terms of providing solutions to the the plight of of native trout? I guess specifically here in Alberta, but as you mentioned, it's a it's a North American wide um, issue. As a scientist, we we all are often looking towards the next question, and people can see well, science is not really <laughs> giving us giving us answers; it's just producing more questions from it. Uh, and you know, we learned from this workshop there. Uh, the science is is informing us um, uh, so much in, in 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 native trout recovery. Again, it's not giving us concrete answers. There are still. Um, there's all, always will be uncertainty. There will always be, um, uh, you know, human-based decisions that are required as to what steps go forward, but the science is informing it. And maybe the best example I can give, give you on, on that is, um, you know, with respect to uh, uh, reintroductions of, of, um, uh, of native trout into watersheds or the, or even the movement sometimes of, of native trout into, uh, into new watersheds. Um, the science in, 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 and genetic understanding of, of native trout has been really critical, um, to, making the best informed decisions as to where trout might be moving around, where certain actions might, might take place, where, even where do we have, um, you know, pure, pure strains of, of some of the native trout, you know, especially um, uh, West Slope cutthroat trout, which uh, um, uh, hybridized with um, both introduced cutthroat trout, but also rainbow trout as well. So knowing where we have pure strains of cutthroat trout, the science on the in the genetics uh, work there has really progressed uh, and allowed us to do um, well uh, very important things, and that work has come out of uh, uh, the University of of, of Montana uh, and and um, uh, the Fish and Wildlife uh, Division down in Montana. Real close collaboration between those two groups, and and we had uh, Dr. Ryan Kovach who was with um, uh, Montana. Uh, the, the, the State Fish and Wildlife Agency with Montana, he came up and presented uh, um, at, at the workshop and it was, he provided both a historical perspective of how that science developed and how it has been applied to um, uh, uh, restore, recover um, native trout in, in, in their state. In in terms of the recovery of, of native trout, are we at the point now where 
um, intervention by us is is the way forward, or are you still hopeful that um, if left alone, if um, ecosystems or or habitats are 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 somewhat protected, that native trout can respond and and get back on their own. <laughs> no, excellent questions you have here, Michael. Again, that's. Uh, I, I'll say it can be context, um, definitely context specific, but over a large range of um, uh, of our native trout and our our native trout in in Alberta, especially along the eastern slopes, intervention um, is 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 going to be going to be required. And you know, I don't want to. Uh, uh, it, it, questions, you know, it's similar to um, Athabasca rainbow trout, um, uh, also questions around bull trout, but I'll, I'll again focus on West Slope cutthroat trout. Um, you know, it hybridization with um, with with the non, non-native trout, uh, non-native rainbows, uh, if we want to keep pure West Slope cutthroat on our landscape, intervention is, is going to be needed and you know it, again participating at the workshop was um, uh, parks canada um and they and me, I, i'm sure many people have, have heard some of the um of their projects in in more recent years where they have um uh you know removed non-native fishes from from watersheds or lakes and reintroduce the the native strains and, and so if you th- think of parks canada um you know their uh the level of habitat development or habitat disturbances is, is lower there they can um uh you know uh, regulate their fisheries um uh, to meet uh, particular goals of of the park but even with looking at habitat and and um, uh, people fishing they have realized hybridization is such a big threat um, that they have to intervene um, and if they just let it let it play its course through um, it would not likely be a great story going going forth the science is telling them the best strategy for it is is to intervene and i guess that's where um conferences workshops seminars like the one you just had are so critical in the sense that they are providing lessons learned based on scientific evidence you know in in going forward and 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 making i guess sound management decisions as to how you approach a problem absolutely uh correct um you know we had uh uh um Two retired folks, actually, from uh, the, the the state of Montana um, fisheries program, and, and they talked about their um, removal projects, uh, largely using um, uh, uh, um, pesticides, so chemicals to remove remove fish, and they have been doing it for. Uh, <clears throat> about 20 years now and they've talked they talked um uh, very openly about their their successes things that they would do different um how the uh, project proceeded uh and you, you know right now they have uh, over uh I, if i got my number correctly um <clears throat> uh pat clancy from montana was saying they had done 130 of these such projects in in the state um to to um very good success in those cases yeah so when it comes to to alberta are we at a at a i don't know what a crossroad or at a a pivotal point in time where if um and 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 again i'm sticking to the to the science end of this but are are we getting close to um turning a corner and in, in seeing a, a brighter future for our native trout species or is there still a lot of obviously a lot of work to be done there's still a lot of work to be done um um michael but uh uh the first part of this the the workshop um and it was, it was kind of an interesting format uh we had the the wednesday afternoon when we started we had before we had our invited speakers um uh, uh you know talk about different aspects of science and new cutting edge we we wanted to see a review of different 
um, native trout research projects going on in Alberta. And turn, turned out we had 27 folks that wanted to speak uh, on, on that, which was, you know, really exciting, um, but also a full agenda. So what we did was, a, uh, they called a speed, speed rounds where everyone gave a five minute presentation, just a quick, almost an elevator speech on what, what the research is, what the recovery is. And uh, <clears throat> that was really very illuminating. And, you know, it, it, it shows the, the great work that, is going on in Alberta right now, both on um, a, a pure research side to, to learn new aspects, but also on actual recovery actions um, taking place in, in, in the province. And, and that's not just within uh, the national parks, but also uh, recovery projects um, at the provincial uh, scale as well. But are we at a crossroads or a pivotal uh, moment? Um, <laughs> you know, if you asked me that question 10 years ago, I would have probably said yes as well. But I think we are at a pivotal stage now where, you know, um, there's enough backing from other jurisdictions that have taken some pretty major steps and, and, and crossed some pretty large hurdles um, to, to put these, uh, you know, actually intervene and, and work toward recovery that we now in the province have that that knowledge and that input that we can work with and and go forward. So I, I would like to say we're at a pivotal, pivotal point now and we're seeing some of that work um, really uh, uh, begin to play through in, in the province where there'd be some really exciting habitat work that uh, has occurred um, you know, west of Rock, uh, the Rocky Mountain House area, or in, in that area, uh, or some really exciting work on developing um, uh, brood stocks for for being able to to stock the right genetics um, of of West Slope cutthroat in, in in new waters, and and how that can be done. So, yeah, some exciting work um, that is is happening. Well, it certainly is very optimistic to hear that so many people are are turning their attention to um, the Alberta native trout question. Um, certainly, uh, there are. Uh, it, it sounds like organizations, groups, government governments um, are are also taking the issue very seriously, and and perhaps we're paving a way uh, forward to seeing native trout remain uh, part of our freshwater resources. Dr. Paul, we'll leave it there for right now, but uh, thank you so much for your time and look forward to uh, touching base with you again soon to, to find out some of the newer developments that are taking place uh, on this very uh, interesting topic. Thanks very much. And I'm uh, uh, really excited to have you uh, uh, talk about native trout in the province. We want them here for the future.